Good evening. Please stand as you are able and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the Board of Trustees meeting for the school town of Speedway for October 4th, 2022. We are working from a 12 item agenda this evening. And the first agenda item is to approve the minutes from the regular meeting of September 13th, 2022. I'll move that we accept the meeting, the minutes of the meeting from September 13th, 2022. I'll second. Thank you both. Is there discussion or commentary on the minutes? Hearing, seeing none. Would all those in favor please signify? And that passes unanimously. Thank you. Thanks. Our second agenda item this evening is to adopt a resolution to transfer amounts from the education fund to the operations fund on a recurring monthly basis beginning in January of 2023. Thank you, Mr. President. This routine action, my recommendation is to adopt a resolution to transfer these amounts of the education fund to the operation fund again beginning in January 31st of 2023. This allows our treasurer to do those things on a monthly basis. Uh, this is uh, previously things that were charged in the education fund back to the operations fund and the operations fund to the education fund so we can connect all the dots in each lined item. Thank you. Is there a motion concerning the resolution? I move that we adopt the resolution to transfer amounts from the education fund to the operation fund on a recurring monthly basis beginning January 31, 2022. Thank you. I'll second. Thank you. Are there questions or discussion about the resolution? Would all those in favor of the resolution please, please signify? That passes unanimously. third agenda item this evening is to adopt a resolution to transfer amounts from the operations fund to the education <coughs> fund before December 31st, 2023. Thank you, Mr. President. Again, this is another routine action item, and the recommendation is to adopt that resolution to transfer amounts from the operations fund to the education fund before December 31st of 2023. Yes. I move that we adopt the resolution to transfer amounts from the operations fund to the education fund before December 31st, 2023. Thank you. I'll second. Thank you. Is there discussion or questions concerning this resolution? 
Would all those in favor of this resolution please signify? And that passes unanimously as well. The fourth agenda item this evening is to adopt a resolution to transfer amounts from the referendum fund to the education fund before December 31st, 2023. This is the third and final routine action of the recommendation to adopt this resolution. This action allows the treasurer to transfer funds for the referendum fund to the education fund to pay for expenses in the education fund, which were pre previously charged to the referendum. These are expenses associated with extracurricular activities such as coaching, academic coaching, band, choir, clubs, etc. Thank you. I'll move that we adopt a resolution to transfer amounts from the referendum fund to the education fund before t December 31st, 2023. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Is there a uh, discussion or are there questions concerning this resolution? Would all those in favor of this resolution please signify? That also passes unanimously. The fifth agenda item this evening is to approve the publication of additional appropriations from the debt service. This is not a routine action. This is a different action, which is approving the advertisement of additional appropriation. Each year, once we start um, discussing and explaining the budget, we have appropriations that are fit in typically six months to all the way 18 months in the rear. So this is one of those things, once we went through all the process, uh, our budget form three that usually has our textbook adoption, I'm sorry, not textbook, but our curriculum materials fund that pays for our textbooks for $10,917 was not uploaded from budget form three to the form which is called notice to taxpayers. We have the money, we just did not appropriate it, didn't move over the form. So we legally wanna advertise this, which will then, if you guys approve to move forward, we'll then go back to the town council and then they'll get approval before we go until it moves forward to the DILGF and uh, to make this legal. So this is just being transparent. It wasn't on the form. We want to make sure that everyone knows that the appropriation will be set and we already have the money for this. We just need to make sure that we can move this forward to the town council. So the recommendation is to approve the advertisement of additional appropriation. Is there a motion? I move that we approve publication of additional appropriation from debt service. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Are there questions or comments concerning the advertisement of the additional appropriation? Would all those in favor of the advertisement for the additional appropriation please signify? And that is passed unanimously. The sixth agenda item this evening is to approve the appointment to the Speedway Public Library Board. Mr. President, the recommendation is to appoint Suzanne DeBoer to the governing board of Speedway Public Library. Her term would be, if approved here, from 2022 to 2026 uh, for this four-year <coughs> term. The Board of Education uh, appoints three members to the library board. The other two is Sandy Feely and Scott Spear. <coughs> Thank you. Yes. I'll move that we approve the appointment of Suzanne DeBoer to the Speedway Public Library Board. Thank you. 
I'll second. Thank you. Discussion or questions concerning this issue? So I, the only comment that I would make is that my understanding is this is a reappointment. And in fact, that the board is thrilled, you know, that, that yes. the library staff, the um, whatever the, what's Darcy's title, the head of the Darcy, library, yeah. <laughs> but the, you know, that they really, that they really, you know, were wanting us to make this reappointment, so. Do we know that? All those in favor of approval of the appointment to the Speedway Public Library Board, please signify. And Suzanne DeBoer is approved unanimously. Darcy will be happy. Thank you. The seventh agenda item this evening is to present the school improvement plans. Mr. President, we, this, each one of our schools, um, write school improvement plans and they started those in the new cycle is in 21-22 in their three-year cycle and this year is a we just revisit and update those plans and we have members of our administrative team here this evening that will share with you the, the school improvement plans from the elementary level from the junior high and from the high school um, so if um, Miss Snap if you would come up and talk to us about the elementary plans and then we'll go with the junior high and then finish up with the high school. Hi everyone. Thank you Dr. Trebley, Mr. Smith, Mr. Harding, Mr. Bickle, Mrs. DeGay and Mr. Disney for allowing us to be here to um, have the opportunity to share our school improvement plans for you. I'm going to be summarizing the plans from the four elementary schools with you. So here at Speedway we are really fortunate to have a more systemic approach to teaching and learning. So in the elementary schools, for example, we have instructional calendars and pacing guides that are used for planning instruction for our students. So in a week's time, for example, what is being taught at Allison in third grade is being taught at Newby and Fisher and Wheeler as well. This is really helpful for us because it allows the teachers and the instructional coaches to streamline resources so that because we're all working together toward the same goals for those students at that grade level. Our district-wide professional development offerings have been really beneficial for our elementary teachers and students as well. For example, we're in our third year of implementing Orton-Gillingham, which is a phonics-based instructional process, and we have seen growth in reading for those students um, from grade level to grade level as they have been <laughs> progressing through that program. It's been awesome. We're also, also working together to improve writing across the district, and we've been super fortunate to have um, the opportunity to work with Smekins Education. Those folks have provided some great PD for our teachers um, coming into the classrooms, providing model lessons and those kinds of things, and that's been wonderful. Also having instructional coaches, um, that allows our teachers to have that hands-on professional development um, to fine-tune their instructional practice. So our coaches meet weekly or bi-weekly with teachers to provide support in areas in which they specifically want or need to grow, and that's been great to see. So because we are all working pretty closely with one another, and that's thanks to our leadership um, giving us the opportunity to do that, our school improvement goals are pretty similar. Basically, we're seeking to continually improve student learning in the areas of reading, writing, and math. So Fisher, more, a little bit more specifically, Fisher and Newby right now are looking at a growth of five percentage points on iLearn for each grade level. Wheeler is looking at 10 percentage points growth on iLearn for each grade level. And then Allison has targeted percentages for iLearn for each grade level broken down by um, subject area as well. So that's how we individually have uh, decided to, to make those goals with our uh, school teams. So our strategies for attaining these goals are also similar with uh, some minor differences based on um, how students have performed at the various schools. So we all use data meetings as a way of reviewing student progress and making instructional adjustments based on how the students are doing. These meetings help to guide instruction and also help to make our intervention decisions that we have for our children. We're all working on implementing the new math series and improving our writing practice. We all focus on ensuring that the critical standards are taught well and often. And then things like tech, like how we use our technology and specific math strategies, those are the things that are more specific to the individual buildings. So we know that if students, staff, and parents love coming to our schools because we keep them safe, 
because we have high expectations and because we work in relationships, we believe that the learning for, that we desire for our kids will happen. So, and as administrators, we appreciate the support that our leaders give us as we work to make our schools the best that they can be. Thank you. Can I entertain any questions, <clears throat> comments? Yes, Mr. Smith. I have, a, I have a question. It's not really about school improvement, but it's directed at Mr. Dietz in the yes. back. Being the uh, new administrator here uh, among the team, uh, not speaking of other schools you've been at, what what can you say in the short time you've been here is new, different, better? Um, I think what I would say, can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. okay. I, I would say the overwhelming support of the community and the support for the schools. I, I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. Um, I'll give a couple quick examples. One, today we had someone from the community that happened to be driving by when our students were walking home that saw a student stop at the corner, take two extra steps, then turn back and go a different direction. And they called and said, I don't know if they're lost, but I want to make sure they're okay. And that they didn't even know this student. Mm -hmm. Turns out the student forgot something at school, went back and got it, and then went on their way. But it was just, it was nice to know that the community is watching out for kids all over the place. Um, the other example is we just had the other night at the football game. Um, last Friday, well, two Fridays ago now, and I went with my kids, but I could not believe how many people I already knew that were there in support of the high school team. Like, it's just, I don't know, I've never seen anything like the way this feels. It's, we care about our schools, we care about our kids, and we do it together. So, I would say that's the biggest joy I've had so far. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Roseborough. Good evening, everyone. Um, unlike Mrs. Snap, I will just be re representing one school, so I will be one fourth as long. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, just representing the Seabay uh, Junior High School, and I'm, I'm obviously very happy and privileged to be here and be able to share with you uh, our uh, school improvement plan. And I've, as you see on your handout, I've kind of div divided it up into three areas. I've given a little bit of the uh, uh, makeup of the junior high and how it's changed a little bit. The, the uh, number you see in parentheses beside each of those uh, different demographic groups, if that's what it was last year. So just to see, you can kind of see how we're changing. And the two that have changed the most are uh, our white population has gone down 8.2% and our English learners has gone up 3.7%. So we continue to evolve, uh, becoming more diverse. Uh, some of the others are staying fairly, uh, you know, static, I guess. But I just thought I would point that out to so you get kind of a snapshot of what uh, your junior high looks like. The uh, second area is kind of the summary of data. And uh, again, we have iLearn results. And um, looking at those, uh, those are not always the numbers that we were used to uh, until you compare them. And then again, in parentheses, I have chosen to put the state average. And so you can kind of see how we compare statewide and it, it looks a little better um, not where we want to be and we're striving to get better uh, but you can see that in all areas especially in eighth grade we were uh, double digits higher than the state average in both english language arts math and both passing both so um, that was uh, encouraging once we once we start breaking the the data down and and looking at marion county looking at surrounding schools and then looking at the state overall uh, those numbers were or uh, better than, than at first when we first saw those. So um, our goals, uh, again, have not changed much. We have goals, of course, of, of uh, growth in math, growth in reading, and to uh, improve attendance. And uh, some of our strategies, we do have one major change that uh, in our strategies, and that is we have adopted a different formative assessment, and that is NWA, NWEA rather than our clear site uh, and that's kind of a big change for us. And so we had to do some professional development in the summer with some teachers before school started to get used to it. We had a couple full days and uh, we're kind of excited about it. The teachers I know are excited about it. We weren't big fans of what we were using. And so we're hopefully, uh, this new formative assessment will help uh, our math and our reading scores. And basically it replaces ClearSight 
Uh, we'll be testing again seventh and eighth graders in the reading and math and to show growth and show achievement. We are going to give the NWA three times a year. Uh, we've given it once, so now we have kind of some data points to move to, toward. We're going to give it again in the winter and then one more time right before I learn. So hopefully this will give us some uh, you know, better feel for identifying student levels and then tailor our instruction or teachers' instruction to what they need. So that's the goal with, with adopting that. A couple side notes that I kind of like about the NWA was uh, there's a Spanish version for our growing EL population, and there is a screening assessment. What, what that is is kind of a shortened version, but with our new enrollees, like I had another one today, uh, we can give this short test in math and reading, which then gives us a kind of a snapshot of where to place them when we go to make a, a schedule to try to fit the new students' needs because we... We are growing at the junior high. Uh, we're like 320, so we're getting a lot of, we get a lot of new students, and it's nice to be able to take a real quick test and see where they go so we know what classes to put them in. So, um, but our other strategies uh, still, in, and then I jump back and forth just a little bit, but in math, we are still breaking down our seventh graders uh, to accelerate in pre-algebra. We also have our eighth grade in regular pre-algebra and in our algebra. Uh, when we get to the reading side, side of it we still have honors language arts and regular language arts in both seventh and eighth grade and we're fortunate enough because of your generosity to still have our reading specialist so we can uh, also use her to help with our lower level readers so those are the strategies to try to improve those areas uh, and then the last one is attendance and uh, there hasn't really been a lot of it uh, i couldn't find the most recent uh, attendance, a lot of it because of COVID and things, but I did put a couple things I thought were interesting, and the last one I could find was 219, 220 for model attendees and chronic absenteeism, and again, to the right is the state average, and you can see that a model attendee, by the way, that is someone who attends 96% of the days or increases by 3%, and we were 13 percentage points higher than the state average, and then chronic absenteeism is anyone who's absent 10% of the year, and we were seven percentage points lower, which is better than that one. So our attendance is, uh, was 97.46, I think, for that year, which is above our goal. One last thing, I just I wanted, it's not really a goal, but I, one thing we're really striving at the junior high with, with our kids is to reward positive behavior. And we've got some things in place. Uh, you know, a lot of times we focus on the demerits and referrals and, you know, and that type of thing, which are important. But we have a, a VIP program that is really taken off. It's a very impressive plug. And if you see on Parent Square, we post the winners every week. And that's just catching kids doing good things. And then reading pulling them out of a, you know, randomly and then give them a candy bar on Friday. Uh, but just rewarding positive behavior. We are now doing an athlete of the week all year uh, for every sport. Uh, coaches turn in, write a little thing about them, we read it, and then we put their picture up all week in the gym. And then we also have our every nine weeks, we just got those in today, we're Spark Plug Award winners, which every nine weeks, every every uh, area gets to nominate or put somebody up for their Spark Plug Award. It's not always the highest score. It may be someone that improved. It may be, you know, whatever. But again, that's kind of a sidebar to the actual goals, but we want to really stress trying to push positive behavior. So that's junior high in a nutshell. Questions? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Mr. Claiborne, high school. Thank you, and uh, unlike Rick, mine will actually be short. <laughs> um, yeah, I think some of the s similar things to what Rick said, uh, we continue to become more diverse. Our, um, our black population, our EL population both increased. Um, and then we have some data that we're still waiting for the DOE to update on their site um, that will reflect that that increased EL or enrollment especially is one that I'm, I'm eager to see them update uh, because I think that's going to be sizable. Uh, for goals, our graduation rate, of course that's the purpose of a high school is to get people their high school diploma. 96% um, continues to be the state expectation. That is our goal. Uh, we were again at 99% last year. Uh, that's the third, day in a row, or third year in a row for 99%. Um, goal two. We'll have at least 65% of graduates pass at least one advanced placement exam. 
That means score three or higher during their high school career. Um, last year was a little bit of a dip there from um, the trend, upward trend, um, from 59% in the class of 2021 down to 44% in the class of 2022. Um, but we've the current junior class is already well above that for this year. Um, and so I think that 65%, again, to have almost two-thirds two -thirds of our kids um, qualify for an AP score uh, is a fantastic goal. And the fact that it's very achievable um, is even more impressive. Um, goal three, states of Speedway High School will have at least 65% of all juniors meet the college readiness benchmark on the evidence-based reading and writing section of the school day SAT exam and at least 55% will do so on the math section. Um, it's based on expected improvements from last year's SAT performance. Last year was the first year that high schools went to the SAT uh, for this graduation pathway. Um, on the executive summary, I included those SAT results. Um, last time I presented to you, I just had the evidence-based reading and writing and the math um, individually. The state has since published the um, the scores for both broken down by school and demographic um, and I think those are even more impressive I, um, I said at the last time that I believed it was the second best that we had ever done um, I think I can make a good case that on this SAT this is actually the best the school has ever done um, you can see uh, far and away number one in Marion County in Indianapolis um, and top 11 for all subgroups the two that um, Obviously, it's, it's hard to say that we have some number ones that aren't in the top things I'm most proud of, but number one um, in paid lunches and number two in free reduced lunches of all schools in the state, I think really shows that we're doing an excellent job teaching all kids. All kids are learning. Um, you know, we're, we're right there in that top group and uh, our, our free reduced lunch percentage is so much higher than the other schools that are in our uh, upper echelon there that we aren't number one in the state um, but we are when we break it down by group also our el students were again number one in the state that's um, happened every year since 2019 that we've had uh, number one el students in the state all uh, subgroups as i said though were at least uh, top 11 in the state so a fantastic turnout for the first year of the sat um, and honestly our teachers are, we're just still getting familiar with the format, um, with the, some of the language, uh, folding that into uh, the college board tests for um, AP and that preparation. And so um, I expect us to continue to get better uh, preparing the students um, and students being able to show what they know on, on this exam, uh, just like they will the others. Any questions? So for the state, when you're talking about that, we're talking about 345 different students or different schools. So out of 345, we're top 10 and, and arguably top one in a lot of our subgroups. Right. 345. So nice I kind of think of that as almost the state championship in each of those areas. Yeah. Um, you know, each one is a big win. I could, you know, the being a small school, you know, the, the 12 to 20 kids that each of those subgroups represents. Uh, there's a name and a face with it, and you know um, which ones did especially well and stepped up. And uh, again, we're able to show what they know on that exam. I have a question just across the board to, for all the schools. Do you feel like um, we are out of COVID? I mean, are there, do you feel like this school year is n normal? I, I'm not asking about catching up, not asking, but like what we're doing day to day, is it pretty back to normal in the buildings or is there still some? Like a knock on wood, I'd say yes. Um, protocols as far as uh, what's happening day to day in the classroom. Kids are working in small groups, collaborating. Um, attendance is um, way back up. Um, the number of positive cases are way down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd be just, uh, sorry. I would say if you didn't know that we had COVID, other than students being behind, mm -hmm. I would you wouldn't know that there was anything different. I think we're seeing a little bit of learning to play school again. To mm -hmm. get back, you know, of course we have we have to catch up, uh, but 
as far as getting off the couch and not being on computers uh, and getting back into that routine. But I think if you see it, we're, we're getting, we're there, we're getting, mm -hmm. getting there. The behaviors are getting better and kids are getting used to full days of back at school. Uh, right. Not laying around at home, I think. It's, it's interesting you asked that, but I did have a parent today that called uh, and asked about uh, how we're, what we're doing as far as cleaning the desks and things still. Um, and it wasn't anything with COVID, it was flu bugs supposedly going around or whatever. And, and so when I did talk to our custodian, that Bob or our head custodian, he assured me that we're doing the same thing. We're wiping the desk down, door handles, pencil sharpeners, uh, all of those things are getting wiped down. So that part we're still mm -hmm. taking mm -hmm. care of. That. And I guess the related question then is, is the recovery, you know, whatever we're going to call this, is that going as you expect? You know, the recovery in terms of making up, you know, catching kids up, whatever that is that, I mean, are we, is that a bigger thing than maybe we thought it was? Is it what we thought it was? You know, how, what are we thinking about that? I think the combination, um, I can start, of continuing to enroll students who have not been in a, a classroom building since March of 2020 um, that are now teenagers, middle to upper teenagers, uh, is a bigger shock than we would have expect, uh, expected. Um, the, the toll that that has taken on their um, social skills, again, playing school, as, as Rick said, those types of things is bigger. We are also having um, more and more students um, that are newcomers to Speedway, newcom newcomers to our country moving in, and many of those students as well have not been in any kind of uh, school for, for years now. Um, so that's becoming to be a significant population, um, which you know we, we continue to push resources towards and help, um, but it is, it's for, for our school, it is more significant than any of us would have foreseen. Mm. Interesting. I would just say for our transient population, it's obviously uh, a big, bigger gap than those that have been with us because we valued in-person instruction that mm -hmm. wasn't as much of a, a gap that we have to make up. So as we're getting new students enrolling um, that are coming from e-learning for the past two years, we're having a period of time. I would add to that when we, we get new enrollees and they say, well, we they want to were e-learning for the last two years, and it's like, yeah. So every life jack we have to learn, let's get them back up to speed. There's a difference. Thanks. How many of you enrolled somebody new today or yesterday? We have two more coming this week. We have appointments also. I have four more tomorrow. And what's the date? October 4th, 10 4. Mm -hmm. 10 5. <clears throat> yeah, so it feels like August as far as enrolling. <laughs> And every new enrollee goes through our principals. Back in the day, it was about you know thirty to an hour each point. So, thank you guys for that from yes. the bottom of our hearts. Mm -hmm. We all know. So I just wanted uh, we just let you guys know we appreciate that. That's the extra attention we do here in Speedway. We're very proud of that. Yep. Thanks. Looking forward to a good year. Thank you all very much. Uh, if you would like, you may <coughs> head home and enjoy your evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the eighth agenda item this evening is to present security procedures regarding standardized testing. Mr. Disney. Yes, we're getting into testing season, and one of the things that we are um, required to do is to have a local test security policy. It's one that is they give us a template to that has been shared with our administrators who will in turn share those with the each um, staff member, teacher, para, um, secretary, people in their buildings that would have access to the test. Um, and um, just sharing it with you so you get an idea of what goes through um, testing security at each one of the building levels. Um, I won't read this to you. I've, you've, you've seen it, but I can tell you there, there are things on there that we have to do as far as test security is concerned that um, I, feel pretty, I feel real good about 
our teachers and our, our principals and what we're going through. One of the things that we um, make sure that we um, talked about just this morning actually was that we have a lot of new teachers and a lot of new teachers sometimes doesn't under, don't understand the test security um, procedures that we go through and not just teachers but paras and secretaries and people that are new to our district and you know you can't say I can't believe on social media I can't believe that question or how they worded that or did that you know those are you can't have cell phones and and I watch or watches in your um, in the testing areas so there's things on there we got to go through every year make sure <clears throat> our people understand and just want to make you guys aware of what those were are there questions about the security policy? Thanks so much. Thank you. The ninth agenda item this evening is to acknowledge the receipt of $342,083.26 in grants received in the past month. The 10th agenda item this evening is to approve the personnel report. Well, the best news that I have is our personnel report is one page this month. <laughs> it's been up to three pages in the past. Um, we have no resignations on this month's report. We have four recommendations for employment and one disability leave. And under employment, Ronnie Peters um, as a custodian. Uh, Taryn Moran, and she has been our, I've got to say something about her. She's been our um, switch hitter here. She has come in and done a maternity leave for first grade, and now she's going to, the recommendation is that she would go to a maternity leave in the third grade at, at Wheeler. Um, Sherry Schilling <clears throat> is a cafeteria worker at Speedway High School. Janice Parks, Speedway, or cafeteria worker at Speedway High School, and for the first time this year, we had all cafeteria workers' spots filled, and that was as of um, Monday. Um, we had all cafeteria spots filled. We, we were running um, short on cafeteria water, workers. Now we're, we're at complete capacity. And finally, in, under disability leave, Haley Goodyear was a third grade teacher at Wheeler. Um, she had planned to come back um, starting Monday, but she is asked to extend her FMLA leave until June 30th of, of next year, which is she's allowed to do by law. So my recommendation is, is that we approve the personnel report as presented. I move that we approve the personnel report as presented. Thank you. I'll second. Thank you. Is there any discussion about the personnel report or any questions for Mr. Disney? Hearing and seeing none. Would all those in favor of approving the personnel report as presented please signify? And that passes unanimously. The 11th agenda item this evening is other business. Mr. President, I do have a few things here I'd like to uh, state. Um, our ADM, as we've given you reports every year or every month, for the last two has started around 1790. Uh, we thought we'd get about 1850 and we finally ended at 1854. Early on this meeting, as we had the school improvement plans, you heard as numbers are still increasing. And just to let you know, we're locked in at 1854. Our junior high has already increased since that number of 320, which is the largest the junior high has been. I don't know a time I it's can't ever been guarantee long. that since 1928, but I'm going to say forever. <laughs> Our high school's at 560. I've been here since 14, and the gentleman to my right was principal way before me. 560 is the largest number I've heard and have seen. Um, our kindergarten class has been locked in right around 187, uh, which is the largest class in our corporation right now. So just bring to your attention. Um, the challenging part of, of this job is to predict what's going to be next <clears throat> August. As the budget is already designed for six months out to 18 months out, that, that's where we as a group have to decide where we want to put our teachers. 
and where we're going to put them. So we are going to have our work cut out for us for the next six weeks, six months leading into the spring to have kindergarten roundups going to be important for us to see these numbers. Uh, we, uh, as a group, we believe in great teachers, small class sizes. We've been founded on that, and that's what's been working because of all these great test results. All kids. Um, have the possibility and, and have the options in schools with having great instruction and that cl small class size. So if this continues, we'll have to shift and have some more or increase the number of teachers in first grade next year if it keeps at 187. If we have another class at 187, um, we might have to start building up. That's sarcastically, but maybe, don't know. <laughs> but if we start putting back to back to back to back classes at 180 and above, that's a different thing. That's different than we've ever seen or dealt with here before in Speedway history. So it's a lot of sit tight and see what happens. But I wanted to throw that and let you know 1854 officially, the ADM, and some of the class sizes and our building sizes right now. Uh, the second thing I wanted to mention, and then I'll be quiet, is we've had an extremely hard couple weeks here in our school corporation and I just want to know that the Tetmeyers, the Straub and the Harding family, your thoughts and prayers are with them on everything that we've gone through and it just makes me uh, again realize over and over again what a great community and school corporation and just community in general that has pulled together and supported these families. So thank you Mr. President. Um, do I remember correctly that there are now two different ADMs, one for the fall semester and one for the spring? <clears throat> that, is, that is correct. Okay. Now they're in February. Okay. We typically trend wise to go back to the ADM. We usually lose kids by February. Right. So it, it typically it goes down. Okay. Right now we're going back up a little bit, but we'll see what happens after mm -hmm. Christmas time and the holiday season. And each ADM is what the state is, uses for the support financial support for that semester, correct? Funding per kid. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other pieces of business? Then we will adjourn to approve claims and sign warrants. Thank you all very much. <laughs>